Okay. Well, anyway, uh, so what we're doing is chapter seven, and then also over the right-hand side, you'll see where I added some pages that uh, have to do with uh, things we haven't gotten to yet. One of them has to do with orbits. Um, how did somebody like Isaac Newton figure out in the early 1700s, how would he figure out that you could maybe put something in orbit around a planet? Uh, that, that's amazing to me that he came up with that. And also, what is weightlessness? Why are astronauts weightless? We're gonna talk about that. And um, <clears throat> the last thing was um, <clears throat> not little g, but big G. What's big G mean in gravity? That kind of thing there. So those are little little things that go along uh, kind of with this. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> Newton's third law. <clears throat> I would say when I was younger and, and I heard about Newton's laws of motion, uh, I really thought there was not much to it. I thought there was three laws of motion. One of them said, uh, talked about inertia. And I thought, well, that's pretty easy. An object at rest. Everybody know that one? Object at rest has a tendency to what? To stay at rest. What about an object in motion? So it has a tendency to stay in motion in a straight line at a constant speed. I don't think I really realized how important that was. And I certainly didn't understand what equi equilibrium was. Remember that? So I want you, what I really like about physics is that you can see it out there. It's out there. If I see any object <clears throat> either sitting still or going at a constant speed in a straight line, it has to have no net force on it. I'm sure I didn't understand that when I was younger. I didn't understand that Newton's first law about inertia had to do with that. that when, but now when I see an object going at a constant speed in a straight line, how can the net force be zero if it's still moving and it's inertia? <clears throat> and, and we don't understand that. Of course, if we watch movies about, uh, and nowadays movies have scientific consultants, we watch a movie now, something in space, where maybe you're away from a gravitational field, that's exactly what you see, isn't it? That an object, somebody lets go of an object, as soon as it comes out of their hand, it starts going in a straight line at a constant speed because they don't have to worry about the gravitational field making it turn into a projectile, remember that? <clears throat> so it, I understand it much, much more than I used to. Newton's second law, F equals MA, uh, that's, that's a tough one too. I, I, I don't think I knew it. I thought, okay, plug and chug, uh, put in M, A, get F. You know, I, I just thought it was a multiplication problem and I didn't understand the implications of it. And yet, in a vacuum, why would a feather and a hammer hit the ground at the same time? They're not being pulled the same, are they? But they do have the same acceleration because the force per mass ratio is the same. That's a little more complicated, isn't it? Again, when I, when I thought I knew Newton's laws, oh, Newton's laws of motion, eh, eh, eh. write them down, three, I know them, eh, I'm smart. No, I wasn't very smart. Just because I could write them down, that didn't mean I knew them at all. And this one here, I think this is gonna fool you. I think this one's gonna fool you. Everybody in this room has heard of Newton's third law. And yet, I'm not sure you understand it. I, Cause I didn't, I really didn't. For every action, I bet you've heard it, haven't you? For every action, there's what? And help me out. You've heard, I know you've heard this, haven't you? Middle school or something. For every action, there's an equal. Help me out. You tired? No. An equal but opposite reaction. You heard that? And <clears throat> I know one reason that I think we get that messed up is because we think like humans. Hey, well, how else am I supposed to think? Uh, but we think like humans. You know, like if, if somebody does something to me, if somebody pushes me and, well, you know, a couple of seconds later, I said, what, what you, what's going on here? And we think about that. For every action, there was a reaction. And, and so we think that's what it means. We, we think it means. And, and have you ever heard of rockets? Have you ever, have you ever any teacher tell you that rockets work because of Newton's third law? Have you ever heard that before? Think about, think about middle school. Did you have that at all about how rockets work? <clears throat> and when I was your age, I was very much into uh, space. I thought I wanted to be an astronaut. I really, that was really drew me there. And uh, I, I was very naive all about a lot of things. Um, uh, there was no internet. There was no, you know, I, I remember writing a letter once, <clears throat> but <clears throat> maybe about three weeks later, four weeks later, I might've gotten a letter and I, I didn't do any good. I had encyclopedias at home and I don't know, they were outdated. <clears throat> I don't know, 
nowadays, I think if you wanted to be an astronaut, you could really look up a lot of stuff and, and do maybe do it if you wanted to. But I, I thought, I've always liked space and stuff like that, and I was certain that I knew how a rocket worked. Uh, what do you think? Do you think you know how a rocket works? Do you think, does a rocket work because of Newton's third law? Raise your hand. If you think yes, raise your hand. Does a rocket work because of Newton's third law? Raise, raise your hand. For every action, there's an, opposite, an uh, equal and opposite reaction. Go ahead. Nobody? All right, all right, let me uh, I'll call somebody. Um, let's see, David, why, why do you think rockets work then? You don't think it's Newton's third law? Is it too much to ask uh, Monday after spring break? <laughs> okay. What do you think? Um, let's see. Kira, what do you think? What do you think about rockets? You think you know how rockets work? No, I don't. Did you ever have a teacher in middle school talk about rockets? I don't remember. Do you remember somebody talking about rockets? So there's like, there's a force that pushes down really hard on it, and that causes somehow pushes something. So, so you, you've heard this, haven't you? How many of you, you have heard this, right? And I, I was certain about the same thing, you know? And I was so certain. That's one thing I really learned uh, when I became a teacher. <clears throat> there were things that I thought I was certain about. And because I was so certain about it, I didn't question it. And I want you to know that, okay? I want you to learn that the rest of your life. If you think you know something really well, be careful. It may cause you not to question things like you should. Like, I was certain I knew how a rocket worked, like you said, right? And, and I was taught this. I had at least two teachers teach me this. And, and I'll give them credit. That's fine. Uh, the space was getting big in the 60s. Uh, but it's not like the teachers were necessarily up to date <clears throat> on some of that stuff. <clears throat> so I guess they did the best they could. But, but I, I'm just certain that um, I knew how it worked. The, the, what happens? The exhaust gases come out of the rocket. And what do they do? Don't they push on the launch pad? Don't they push on the launch pad or not? And they push the launch pad that way, right? And and then the rocket goes the other way. Isn't that isn't that Newton's third uh, law? Or if I blow a balloon up and I don't tie a knot in and let go of it, and why does the balloon go that way? Oh, I understand that. The air that's coming out of the balloon, you know, it put it goes this way, and the balloon goes that way. Doesn't that make sense? Well, both those things I said are wrong, but. What I want to do is tell you I didn't think they were wrong. That made sense to me. But I clearly remember one of the first times, first times when I was teaching, uh, and again, because I didn't question it, I thought I knew it, all right? I remember the first time somebody asked me this, and this was like maybe 45 years ago, and they said, well, what happens when a rocket is not close to the launch pad? I, I was fast on my feet, and I said, well, the exhaust gas is pushed on the air. They push the air that way, and that makes the rocket go the other way. <laughs> See, I was pretty smart, yeah. But I clearly remember a day when said somebody said, w what about in space? Do, do rockets work in space? I clearly remember how I paused, because I thought, I know rockets work in space, but there's nothing to push against. <laughs> you see that? And that really woke me up and said, wow, something I thought absolutely I knew what the answer was. Uh, there was something missing, wasn't it? Do rockets work in space when there's no air to push against? Do they not? They do. How's that happen? And that's what I want to try to teach you. Uh, it's very important to me that you leave here knowing uh, how rockets work, how, um, what, why astronauts are weightless, that kind of thing. What is an orbit? I really want you to know that part of, um, of physics. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to try to start you out, and I can tell you that the entire chapter is right here. Everything I want you to know is right there. And <clears throat> all I want you to do is look at that every day, and, and I think you'll, you'll be okay. Let's take a look at the first one. <clears throat> Here's what Newton really said. Here's what Newton said. Even though he said for every action there's an equal opposite reaction, I don't think it's what you think it is. I'm pretty sure it's not. 
Because like I said, humans, we think, well, I'm going to do that, and then something later will happen. Uh, no, that, that never happens. So here's what happened. Ready? Is he, here's what Newton said. Um, forces are always created in pairs. Wow, I, I didn't know Newton's third law had to do with that. Yeah, yeah. For example, uh, if I push on the book, if I push on the book, see that? How many forces am I creating? And they say, wow, it must be one. It must be one. You, you push the table. And Newton says, no, no. Forces are never created as single units. There's some high level, high level theoretical physicists today. They're still trying to figure out, is there such a thing as a monoforce? They're trying to discover, is it possible anywhere in the universe to have a force that exists uh, not in a pair? And we still haven't found it. And so, so what happens is um, you can't have an object. Objects don't act on other objects. My finger doesn't act on the book. My finger and the book interact with each other. What? Try it again. Ready? If I touch the table, what else is happening at the exact, exact same instant? I push table down. Table pushes finger up. Now, which one happened first? This is important. Which one happened first? Ready? 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 Which one? Which, which one? Ah! So which one happened first? And Newton said they, they happened exactly at the same time. I cannot create a force, but two pair, a pair of forces can be created at the same time. Objects don't act on objects. They interact with each other. Let's take a look at the next one. Objects don't act on any other objects. They interact with each other. Action, reaction, pair of forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. All right, so if you said, uh, I push table down, finger pushes table down, that's half of the pair. The other part of the pair is table pushes finger up. The magnitude is exactly the same, but the direction is opposite like that. That's what he was saying in Newton's uh, third law. It says here in number two, an action-reaction pair of forces never cancel each other out because they don't act on the same object. I don't think I understood that either. Uh, let me ask you this question, ready? Um, let's say a teacher pushes on wall. Teacher pushes on wall that way. See that? What's the, what's the other half of that? And it tells you down there that they always, uh, number three, an action-reaction pa pair of forces always fit the recipe. I didn't understand that. And so watch, teacher pushes wall to the left. What's the recipe? Wall pushes teacher to the right. Well, number one, how come the wall isn't going that way if I'm pushing it that way? Number two, why am I not going that way if the wall is pushing me that way? And I know as a human, here's what you want to say. You want to say, well, they cancel each other out. Look at, look at number um, two again. They can never, if they're part of the same action-reaction pair, they can never cancel each other out. Why not? Ready? Teacher pushes wall that way. That force is acting on the wall. What's the other force? Wall pushes teacher that way. What's that acting on? It's acting on me. And so they're not acting on the same object, so they can't cancel each other out. I didn't say forces couldn't cancel each other out. They can, but they can't be in the same action-reaction pair. Look at number three. Action-reaction pair fit the recipe. A acts on, that means push or pull. B, B acts on A. Okay, so a long time ago when a teacher told me exhaust gases, the exhaust gases coming out of the rocket push launch pad down that way right then what he said he said rocket moves the other way does that fit the recipe try it again exhaust gases push launch pad down what's the other path of that fit the recipe okay one more time exhaust gases push um launch pad down launch pad pushes 
exhaust gases up. Wow, what, what word is missing? Rocket. There is an action reaction pair with the exhaust gases pushing down on the, on the um, uh, launch pad. But that has nothing to do, nothing to do with making the rocket go that way. What? How about the balloon? When you untie the balloon, and you know the air that comes and hits you in the face? You know, air that's coming out of the balloon, air out of the balloon uh, pushes my face. And that makes the balloon go that way. It doesn't make sense. Exhaust, uh, get, exhaust air from a balloon pushes face this way. What does the face do? It pushes the exhaust uh, air that way. What's missing? The balloon. It doesn't tell you why the balloon goes that way. So I know a lot of people teach it that way. They'll teach it, um, and just like, uh, like you said, Mason, um, so what happens when the rocket gets away from the launch pad? You say, well, exhaust gases push air that way. What's the rest of the recipe? The air push the exhaust gases that way. Again, what's missing? Rocket. So that's not, what about in space? Exhaust gases push nothing. They don't push on anything. They can't, they can't create a pair of forces there. But the rocket keeps moving. A rocket actually can accelerate. So we're missing something, aren't we? So I'm going to get to that. I will get to rockets here pretty soon. Uh, take a look at number four. Two objects can have equal forces acting on them, but have different results. Uh, why? And let's take a look. Um, look down here at number five. Can everybody see number five? Everybody take a look at number five. It says here, I'm going to have you do these things called force diagrams. Um, sorry, I didn't notice that. I'm going to have you do these things called force diagrams. And take a look at this drawing here. Ready? Um, hammer. All right, let, let's identify. Um, I'm going to have you do this like on the test. I'll, I'll do something like this. I'll say, you'll draw a force diagram. And when you draw the force diagram, what I want you to do is uh, the tail, the tail of a vector is on the object that created the force, um, uh, not on, it says here, put the tail of each vector on the object that the force acts on. Like I said, not the object that created the force. So, when I see that arrow here, see this arrow here, ready? There's A1 and A2. Now what I'm gonna do is, this is gonna help you a great deal. I'm gonna have the same letter with a different subscript if it's part of the same action-reaction pair. Let's try it. If I said, identify, identify force A1, you'd say, well, I can do that. Hammer pushes nail down. I identified that force, didn't I? Now let's identify this one using the recipe. Nail pushes hammer up. Okay, does that fit the recipe? That's an action-reaction pair, isn't it? Um, how come they don't cancel each other out? What do you think? McKinley, why, why don't they cancel each other out? Um, I know this is day one. You say, I, I don't know anything about this chapter. What do you think? Do forces ever cancel out each other? Do any, can a force cancel another force? Like if you had five newtons this way and five newtons this way, can they cancel each other out? It's not a trick, it's not a trick question. Yes. yes. Can these two forces cancel each other out? No. Why not? Because Yeah, this force is acting on the nail, and this force is acting on the what? On the hammer. They're not acting on the same object, are they? So they'll never cancel each other out if they're part of the same action-reaction pair. Now, so if I ask you to identify a force, it's gonna fit that recipe. A acts on B, you know, pushes or pulls. Hammer pushes nail down, nail pushes hammer up. Okay, now, every year I have people that think I'm asking the same question here. Here's my next question. What effect did that force have on the motion of the object, okay? So here's this nail sitting there all by itself, not doing anything. All of a sudden, a force is on it, okay? 
So what happens to any object that has a net force down? Here's my nail. Boom. All of a sudden there's a net force on the nail down. What effect does it have, does that force have on the motion of the nail? And you say, well, the nail was sitting still, but it starts to do what? It starts with A. Anytime you have a net force on it, what does it have to do? Accelerate. So what's the nail do? Boom. It accelerates down. Now watch this. What effect did this force have on the motion of the hammer? The hammer is moving this way and the force is in what direction? So what happens? Ian, you know, the hammer's going this way, force is in that direction. What's it gonna do? Just like skydiver. Skydiver's going this way, had a net force on this way. What happened to the skydiver? Uh, yeah, but what, what, if, what effect did this have on the motion? What, what effect, skydiver has already reached terminal velocity and he pulls his parachute and then he has a net force up. So he's still going down, but what happens to his motion? He slowed down. He did. So this hammer was moving in that direction, but the net force was in that direction, wasn't it? So it's gonna slow the hammer down. You say, oh, I never thought about that. That's why the hammer slows down. I saw a video, it's very mean, very mean video. Uh, you ever see America's Funny Song videos? This is many, many years ago, but it was somewhere in South America and they had kids, they had this raggedy old ball. I mean, it's, that's the only soccer ball they had and they're playing in the streets, but they were having fun. And the little kid, uh, he had never been asked to play. He's just, you're not old enough. You're not old enough to play soccer. And he watched, he watched. He just couldn't wait till the day until they asked him. And then they said, okay, all right, you want we're gonna let you play and we'll let you take the kickoff. And, and they said, let's get in the huddle and I'll tell you how to do the kickoff. And he's so, so excited. And what they did is they took this ball and they replaced it with another ball, looked just like it, except that ball is full of sand. Okay, and the kid didn't know it. And he said, I just want you to go up there and kick that ball as hard as you can. Okay, so what's gonna happen here? He, he thinks, ready? Foot is gonna push the ball and make the ball accelerate, isn't it? Isn't that right? Okay, but what's gonna happen? Uh, why isn't that ball not gonna accelerate? What do you think's gonna happen? He goes up, and, and yeah, it was a mean video in a way. He goes up and just runs it. He's gonna kick as hard as he can. Of course, his foot stops immediately. He falls on his face in the street. And they laugh because they've done that before with younger kids. So, so what was happening here? Um, the, the foot, as soon as that force hit that soccer ball, the soccer ball put another force on the foot, didn't it? And it was large. And it slowed down the foot so much that the foot came to a stop like that. Um, we're going to talk, we'll talk a little bit about soccer again. Uh, I know you guys have played soccer enough that, uh, have you ever seen like, uh, especially little kids, they do this all the time. Uh, you, when you run toward a soccer ball and there's somebody else running at full speed, you tend to think, hmm, I don't know about that. We're running at full speed toward each other. What's going to happen? Uh, and you tend not to want to do that. Little kids don't think like that. Little kids will they'll run and run right to that same ball. And you ever seen it where they hit, kick the ball at the same time? You ever see it? They both fall down and the ball is just sitting there. Uh, sometimes that happens there. All right, so anyway, um, what we have is, if I ask you to identify the force, then use the recipe. In this case, hammer pushes nail down, nail pushes hammer up. But if I ask you what effect did it have on the motion of the object, the effect on this was to accelerate the nail downwards, and the effect here was to decelerate the hammer. Get that? Or you can say accelerate upwards. Does anybody know why the hammer, st uh, why does the nail stop? Why didn't the nail keep, when I hit like that, why does the nail keep accelerating? What do you think is gonna happen? When you put a nail in a, a piece of wood, what happens there? The nail should accelerate, shouldn't it? If I was out in space and I had a nail, I went, boink, it would just, it would accelerate uh, until it left the hammer, then it would go off at a constant speed. So what makes a nail uh, slow down? I bet Avery, you know that. Why do you think the nail doesn't keep moving? Say it a little louder. Say it again. I, I just couldn't hear you. So does something else happen to the nail when it's in the wood? 
Right, nail pushes wood down and out. What's the wood do? It pushes the nail back, doesn't it? And it's gonna, it's gonna decelerate the nail and the nail eventually stops, doesn't it? Well, anyway, believe it or not, <clears throat> everything in this chapter <clears throat> is right here on this one page. It's just that you have to fight your, your own brain because your own brain wants to tell you something that you learned, quote, a long time ago and you thought you were correct. I still haven't even talked about rockets yet, but, but I will. All right. Um, I've seen this on, uh, maybe I watched too much uh, America's Funniest Home Videos, but how many of you ever been at a lake or somewhere and you saw somebody, they were on a canoe or they were on a boat and they said, well, there's the dock right there. All I have to do is what? Step on the side of the boat and what? Just, all I have to do is push myself up. Um, and, and what always happens to this person? What happens? Anybody seen that? How many, how many have you ever seen something like that happen? And um, even if I told you that you, you probably know, even after this chapter, you'll say, I know it's going to happen. Some of you might still do that as an adult. So well, I'm going to be cool. So I'm just gonna whoop, I'm just gonna take off from the kayak or the or the canoe. I'm just gonna jump up on the deck and that's not gonna work. Because how can you jump how can you jump that way? You have to push the canoe that way, don't you? Oh you gotta go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my fault. All right. Oh, it's not time yet. I'm sorry. So when you push that canoe, sorry, when you push the canoe back, um, you want the canoe to push you forward, right? But then what well, the canoe has almost no friction in the water. The canoe will push the water back a little bit. The water will push the canoe a little bit. And so you'll have a net force in the canoe backwards. And so the canoe will start going like that. And then you'll go into the water like that. Uh, the other thing is, I don't know if you have a dog at home. Um, there are so many different kinds of dogs. Uh, how many of you have a dog that has a big tail? Raise your hand if you have a dog at home and have a big tail. All right, what happens when the dog wags his tail? If you're, so I'm not in the habit of looking at my dog's butt. But what, what happens to the dog's butt when he wags his tail? And the whole butt moves in it. How many have a little dog with a small tail? Anybody? Okay, so if you ever had a, a little dog with a small tail, when they move that tail, that's the only thing you see move. That's the only thing. Big dog, ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. Everything moves like that. Um, what if the tail was even bigger? What if the tail was even bigger? Maybe half the, half the body of the dog would start moving like that. All right. Um, anyway, what I'd like you to do is uh, go ahead and start reading this chapter. And um, on your reactometer experiment, think about where it's at. Say, well, it's really almost done. And I'm sure I could finish it on Wednesday. Uh, if I give you Wednesday to work on, you can do that. Also, don't forget, I'll be here at lunch today, and I'll be here after school today, and I'll be here at lunch tomorrow and after school tomorrow. And if you attend one of those sessions, then you can actually take the uh, bonus opportunity um, on Wednesday. If somehow you can't make it on Wednesday, let me know, all right? All right, well, thank you very much. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back.